Hello everybody, this is Bud and in this video we talk about screen looks. I guess this is fine. I know the virtual machine now has the title bar. Maybe I should make it full screen. God damn it. There. All right, all right. We talk about screen looks like i3 look and that stuff, but uh, we will look into... Yeah, I think it's my, my favorite lock screen, but I think i3 lock is perfectly fine. If that is what you're using, that's a great lock screen as well. But the lock screen we set up here uh, will use X screensaver as the background, but we will not use X screensaver as the lock screen. We will use X secure lock and we will set it up with XSS locks. We will focus on that stuff. XSS lock and X screensaver, X secure lock thing there. As you can hear, there are a lot of moving parts here, but it's... Uh, rock solid once it's set up it's a really good uh, configuration i really think so and you can also uh, use this xss lock um, and instead of x secure lock you could use for instance i3 lock and still get a lots of benefits here it's it's a really good setup for several reasons uh, and one of them is probably it makes everything a little bit more secure in my opinion but there are those who have might have a different opinion on that actually but prepared some show notes uh, with some example i3 config key bindings so it gives us a hint on what we will do here first key binding mod x execute the command x set s activate and then we have a one key binding that execute system ctl suspend and one key binding that simply does x it <laughs> exit that's what i meant to say all right um we also open leafpad i guess because that's the editor we choose for these videos and now i will try to do it like this then if i open up terminal no i think i messed it up this is what i meant to do let's make this tab and move this to the right there and um, no i didn't mess it up now <laughs> i can barely use i3 in its default configuration i am quite uh handicapped without my normal config but that's for a later video all right open guess what i will open i3 configuration um as you can see, I've already prepared the key binding here. Uh, mod X will execute system CTL suspend. And maybe we should try that command first and foremost here and see what happens. Do it in a terminal. This happens. This is um, the virtual machine uh, looks like this when it is in suspend mode. So suspend means that uh, the current state of the computer is moved into memory, into RAM. And then it shuts down everything in the computer except the power that's needed to keep uh, the memory alive, so to speak. So it's extremely power efficient, but it's not 100% turned off, but it uses very little power. You can, I have uh, had uh, laptops in this state for, for like eight hours and can, can use the laptop for several hours after a suspension like this. So, so it is very uh, power efficient, especially for laptops, I guess. And it's also rather fast to turn it on again. It's faster than hibernate. And now when I press any key there in suspension, we get this. I will get out of here as soon as possible because I know it's blinding uh, light. But as you could see, that is i3 lock, this guy. And that, I have not configured anything here for this to happen. It automatically locks the screen with i3 lock when I suspend the system with system D here, system CTL suspend. Uh, hopefully this works for you as well, this command here, system CTL suspend, but it might differ on different dis desktop environments. And it's also related to light DM or using a uh, desktop manager. Uh, because that is what allow this user to use this command without sudo here. That is kind of taken care of by light DM in my case. But if you have like GDM or SDM or whatever they are, they are called, it should work for you too. Uh, otherwise, you need sudo here to suspend with systemd like this. It's really good to be able to do it without sudo because then you can also reliably set it up as a key binding, for example. 
Um, all right. Uh, the reason it uh, locked the screen with i3 lock when we suspended is actually here in the i3 config. Here is a command that is automatically started when we start uh, by i3. And the command that is automatically started here is xss lock with the command line option transfer sleep lock and then dash dash and then i3 lock no fork that is the locker and xss lock is quite simple it simply lock the screen whenever it receives either one of these uh, sleep or suspend events from system d or when it receives uh, dpms events which we will talk a bit about as well. When such events occur, it will automatically lock the screen with the lock command specified here. So quite simple, but really good. And the reason you would like to have that is, for example, then you don't have to worry about locking your screen when you leave your computer, so to speak. It simply automatically locks when maybe a screensaver or when the screen blanks, that is DPMS. Yeah, that is also another event is when the screensaver starts, it actually also executes XSS lock and starts the lock. So it automatically locks the screen when it uh, uh, get idle signals or sleep signals. And that is, of course, uh, good for security, you know. So if someone steals your suspended laptop, for example, they when they open open the lid, it will not give them direct access to the session. They need to go through i3 lock. We can see the command here. But it started from i3 and that is, I guess, fine to do. But if this process somehow would get killed, then you get the then you can end up in this bad position where you think the, the computer is locked. You have just locked it with the, by closing the lid or whatever. But it is actually not locked properly because this process has been terminated somehow. Uh, that is also why this kind of um, is a bad uh, ID for security reasons because it gives you this uh, false sense of being secure. You don't have to worry about locking the screen yourself. It's taken care of automatically. Um, but uh, it usually or it always works as long as it's running. Um, which is why I like to set this up with system D, but that is kind of the only reason um, you want to do that to have it automatically restart itself if it if there would be any problems with the process. And you never know, it could happen. So let's start with that. We comment this line out from the i3 config. Uh, we create a new file. It's a unit description xss lock that's fine it's part of graphical session dot target and the reason we want to add this part of thing is because then it will automatically terminate this process correctly when we terminate i3 and that's good for us but it's not super needed if you don't have that set up uh, this is of course needed exec start here we could, I guess, just copy paste uh, the same command here. And I have also prepared uh, an image, by the way, so we don't have to see that blank white background. So let's use that image. It's in my home directory. And remember, you cannot use tilde in systemd config, so you use percentage %h. And there I have win7.png. Um, and then we add the restart. You can actually do restart always here. Restart on failure is also good, but this really restarts it. And that's good. Now we save it. Systemd config xss lock.service. It's not running automatically here. We could even try to re restart, but we let's not do that. What we do first and foremost is actually test this systemctl user start xss lock i highly recommend always doing this when you create new units and stuff like that to make sure they are working if they aren't you usually get an error message here but it can even be good to also peek at the status it's active we got some error message not sure what that is about uh, let's see if i do 
this. Yeah, some 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 debuff thing. <laughs> All right, I'm not sure. Maybe this is it's possible to set this up as a debuff. Uh, getting current session debuff free. Whatever. Let's not get into it. I, I I don't know. I don't know the answer. There is probably a, an even better, more proper proper way to set it up as a debuff type. Maybe. If someone knows, please let me know. I don't know. This works. This is fine. And we can now also start this with our i3 i3 service here. So we can add it here. Bones XSS lock dot service. Okay. Um, it is running. That's good. And as I mentioned, it uh, reacts to uh, these events system D C T system CTL suspend which I have bind here to mod X so that should work if I press that there we could see the funny Windows 7 desktop screenshot and this is actually i3 lock now uh, but as I mentioned uh, it also reacts to screensaver events and we can actually force the screensaver to start and this will work even if you don't have a screensaver configured whatsoever X set S S is screensaver, activate. And this will activate the screensaver and at least it will send the signal. We don't have a screensaver, but it will still make XSS lock, lock the screen. But now, of course, without suspending. So maybe this is a better way to... Uh, uh, maybe we should use that command instead of suspend. Um, or what I will do is this. We have this suspend key binding on mod shift x and then we start the screensaver with mod x i'm not sure how much we will need these key bindings but god damn it there like that okay mod x screensaver great um and then now you might think, well, I do lock my screen. I do, don't use XSS lock, but I do have a key binding to start i3 lock, which of course we could, instead of saying X set S activate, which is kind of a stupid command, which could just as well just simply start the screens, the lock screen here. But now you see that that means that you would have to, if we do that, we can save this and I can press mod X. And now it locks with i3 lock, but now we don't have the background. So that means we have to sync this if we if that is important it isn't really you know but uh, that means we have to change the option here for the image here and then also do it for xss lock and you should also never if you are using xss lock like we are doing now and that is running in the background you should never um, you should always lock the screen with with a command to trigger xss lock to lock it Otherwise, you might end up with like a double lock screen kind of thing because you lock your screen like this exec i3 lock. Yeah, that works. But then XSS lock can actually receive signals while the screen is locked. These screen blanking signals, for example, that will trigger XSS lock in turn and lock it again, so to speak, which is kind of annoying. And since it also works here with this now does the same thing. But another uh, another benefit is of course of course now we only have one place to configure uh, where we configure uh, the lock screen in this case the system d unit and that's uh, i like that um, and we also have this generic command so even if we change i3 lock and stuff like that this will always work to lock the screen while uh, xss lock is is running uh, and we will change the lock screen in this video very very soon uh, okay Okay, let's see what I have written here. Yes, it started from the i3 config and it does. These are the packages, by the way. And also, I should mention that uh, that if you are on OpenSUSE, at least this is not available in the official repositories, XSS lock, which is, it is actually pre-configured in the default i3 config, but it isn't part of the official SUSE repositories, at least. I don't know why, but it isn't. It is a quite common and often even recommended uh, package. And you see it all over the place, actually. So I think they should try to get, get it into the official repositories, but whatever. If you are using SUSE very quickly, they have this annoying PPA setup just as Ubuntu kind of has. 
So you can get it from here. If you follow that link, you can download the package. This, at least for Tumbleweed here, uh, maybe you have to do something else for, for Leap, whatever. All right, i3 lock, that is available everywhere. Xorg, Xset, probably already installed, and that is what gives you this command. Uh, X secure lock, we look into that soon. X screensaver, also needed. I have installed all of these already. Uh, all right. So XSS lock, it's uh, kind of a, it's, it's not super old, but it is uh, like at least 10 years old, uh, and it lives here on Bitbucket. Uh, which is something you don't see that often uh, anymore. <laughs> Bitbucket repos, that is. Um, and we can see it hasn't been updated since like 2014, 13 here. But it works fine, it works really well. Uh, it can be good to know about this repository because it has some example scripts here, how to make some more advanced dimmers and stuff like that. It can be cool to look into those and I, I have used them, you will see it later. Um, there now my actual physical real life screen uh, there I, I have some problem with my dock it's sometimes blank the screen it's quite annoying you know about this if you have watched my videos i constantly complain about it whatever it's a bit blah blah we know that command is usually some kind of lock screen for example i3 lock dm tool lock that is included with light dm and if you use that you can actually lock the screen but use light dm instead as kind of a lock screen so now this is not login it's locked so we cannot change a desktop session here for example cannot do this but you can um, use the power menu which is kind of nice and you can also actually switch user if you have multiple users. Um, so there are benefits of using this, something like this as a lock screen as well. But as you can see, it's also quite slow to start this. It's almost annoyingly slow in my opinion. But that is an option. And if we wanted to, we could use that uh, with our as the lock screen with XSS lock as well. Let's do this. Let's comment this line out and duplicate it and change the lock command to that. Why not? DM to uh, lock. Save. And then we also have to restart the service here now. So system CTL user uh, uh, um, restart XSS lock service. And now pressing mod X, now it's it, it locks with this. Also nice now as you can see, but it is still uh, a bit annoying here now. So when we change lock command now, or edit, even if we just edit, change the image here, for example, we would have to do this. We would have to uh, daemon reload, which it automatically does with our setup. Uh, but we also have to restart the unit if it is running. Also kind of annoying. There is a way to get around that, and that is instead of executing a command like this, we could write a wrapper script that gets executed by XSS lock. So let's do that. Let's say desktop. Ah, that's right. I don't think I removed this. Uh, yeah, you will just be scared if I open what what we will end up with. So let's let's create a new one. Uh, new lock. It's called. Okay, let's try to execute the command new lock here. Doesn't work. We'll also restart this so I don't forget it. Let's create the script. A new shell script bin sh. And then we can do dm tool lock. Great. Save that in our bin directory. So bud.local slash bin. That's where we have stored this, but you know, in your path. Uh, and we call it new lock, new lock on the block, save, make that executable, schmod plus x path to script, local bin new lock. And now if this is working, we should be able to lock the screen with that command. So we can test it here in the terminal first. It seems to work. It starts dm tool lock. That's great. So it's of course, this is a completely worthless script. We could just as well write, enter the password. 
there. We could, uh, of course, just as well have done DM tool lock now, but you will see it will get more advanced soon. But one benefit with this is that now, since this is our lock command here, now we can, for example, do except as activate. What that will do is trigger XSS lock, which in turn triggers our new lock script, which in turn triggers DM tool lock. Uh, as expected, that's great. But now I can actually change the lock command here to, uh, let's take i3 lock here. And now, now we have tilde support because this is a shell script. So now uh, we don't have to reload anything. Uh, we can make changes to this script and it will immediately work here. You see, now we get this look. And that's kind of a nice uh, setup to have in my opinion and makes this much easier to work with when you're configuring it and stuff. And you know, it's uh, nice to be able to do that. But uh, there is actually some, it's a weird little drawback here and it's kind of hard to explain, but I guess it's also a bit important. You see, XSS lock uses the transfer sleep lock option here. And that is actually recommended in the i3 config, recommend that you use that. Also, we will uh, soon now uh, change lock screen to execure lock. And they also have a, a section on their readme that you should make sure to use uh, the L option. And the L option is uh, transfer sleep lock. You can also do this just to make it clear here. Help, XSS lock help lists uh, command line options. So interesting options here are notifier and transfer sleep lock. So transfer sleep lock, pass sleep delay lock file descriptor to locker. It doesn't make that much sense, but it is kind of an important uh, piece of the puzzle of locking the screen here. And they actually explain it the best here on, on uh, the execure lock readme. The L option is critical as it makes sure not to allow machine suspend before the screensaver is active. Otherwise, previous screensaver content or previous screens content may show up for a short time after wake up. So this is only relevant when you put it into suspend. It doesn't, this doesn't matter at all when you use exit as activate here because that never suspends. But when you suspend the screen or the computer, we might actually see it now because it, I, it, the thing is it doesn't work now as we have, have, have it set up. It's not like it breaks everything, but it also doesn't work. So, well, yeah, it's good it, because we see one issue with this now. It takes a really long time to suspend. Unlock and we get the lock screen, that's great. Because what we are doing now is um, executing our own custom script. And XSS lock works like this. When it transfers this sleep lock, it passes a variable uh, or creates an environment variable that is included in the lock command. So the lock command here has this uh, command uh, environment variable set up, uh, which is the XSS sleep lock file descriptor or something is the name of that environment variable. Um, and then it is up to the, the command here that is executed by XSS lock to close the file descriptor that this uh, that environment variable is pointing to. I know it's a lot to keep in mind here and it is not important. So I shouldn't delve too much about it here. I have already configured this. What, what it boils down to is that you manually have to close that. And I know that that sounds very annoying and stuff like that, but I have figured out how to do it at least with execure lock. Here we close that file descriptor, but it's only, um, only active on suspend and it if you don't do what we do um, here by executing our custom script with xss lock both i3 lock and execure lock have support for this so they will automatically close the file descriptor you don't have to worry about it when, when you enter it like this but as you can see this is the exact same command we have here as we have in our script and it's much faster to, to suspend when you do it like this than if you start it from a script, unless you close that file descriptor manually. Um, 
So that might sound like why not just use this then because that sounds like a lot of work uh, but there is a benefit of setting up setting up the script not just that it's easier to configure the lock screen and stuff like that and as you can see there's lots of uh, to configure X secure lock here you have to use these environment variables it gets kind of messy to do it in, in the in the service file but another uh, reason I do this is uh, because then I can set up customize this script a bit and add a pre-lock and a post-lock function here because it is <laughs> in I learned this the hard way that it's a for example a really good idea to pause any media playback so you don't uh, play music when you suspend the computer because when you resume the computer it will also resume the music and that will play might start playing really loud and it might be in the middle of the night or in the middle of the bus or whatever you know so that's one thing you might want to do and there are other things you might want to do before and after you lock the screen uh, and this makes it kind of convenient to do that there is actually also a way to do this in pure or pure I shouldn't say that because it isn't that pure when I think about it but system D also since we are using system D here system CTL suspend there are system targets that um, that you can uh, bind services to or units to uh, that will activate before and after you suspend uh, and but, but this involves uh, adding files to the system D system configuration so to speak I don't want to do that in these videos but you can also set things like this up there out of scope for this video maybe we can look into it some other time I don't think so but I know know that is a option as well I, I rather do it in a script here and since I figured out finally how to do this properly which I did actually by looking at the examples here you, ha you see you have this transfer sleep lock generic and transfer sleep lock i3 lock uh, where they kind of where they show how to uh, terminate the sleep lock <clears throat> and you can also that another nice thing is that then you can have this script by checking for this file descriptor you know if it's a suspend or a, a normal lock signal that has been sent and then you can also do different things depending on that I actually don't do that in this script but that's a possibility as well um, all right maybe we should get into this X secure lock thing because uh, it's kind of cool X secure lock if you have it installed you can start it it's just like i3 lock just lock the screen and here it's a black background press any key prompt enter password unlock simple uh, but X secure lock is configured with not with command line options but with environment variables for some reason and not with a config file either so you have to export like a bunch of environment variables or execute the command prefixed with the uh, environment variables so if we do yeah if we do this for example x secure lock password prompt so this will change uh, the style of the prompt uh, and you can start the command like this now x secure lock now you'll see the prompt is different it has some cryptic hex code and this is just also to make it obfuscate a bit if someone is uh, peeking over your shoulder it's much better to have something like this than asterisks that's the most insecure one because that actually tells uh, how many uh, um, characters there are in, in your password and I know I am doing this on YouTube recording it you can you can hear how many keys keystrokes there are in the password and I know there is also technology now uh, like AI stuff that you can um, that can actually listen to someone typing on a keyboard and know which keys are being typed and stuff like that you can it's not that complicated to do it now nowadays I don't care because this is a virtual machine here but you should be aware of those uh, 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 security issues if you weren't but it's annoying you know if you have to start the command like this every time and and you will want to set up a bunch of these environment variables uh, I added more than than needed here to this readme because uh, I want to show the most useful ones but there are even more available and they are uh, listed here on, on, on the readme it's probably the easiest place to look for it but you can also 
do execure lock help I think and then it lists all of these in, in one big go here it have like this emoji font which is super fun oh how fun it is with emoji but it doesn't work there is something at least on uh, this build on OpenSUSE or I think I actually tried to build it from source to see if I could get it working but I couldn't get these emoji and disco prompts working there is a problem with uh, multiple fonts in the prompt screen it doesn't seem to to want to work I, I, I'm not sure I also don't care whatsoever. That's the only kind of bug in this uh, that I have uh, noticed here. But I, if I recall correctly, I got this working on Arch. But I, I think it is related to the XFT, Xlib XFT library, which has, which is a video for its own in a way. <laughs> um, all right. So let's say we want to use this now instead of of, uh, of our whatever we have there I guess what we do is we let, let's do this so we can speed this up a bit we copy my script here and as you can see it's a very long script but that's because most of it are these environment variables this script doesn't have to be more than more than five lines if you don't want it to uh, but this will make it this is good because it does that um, uh, closing that file descriptor otherwise you will either get a slow slow lock like we did there with i3lock or that's actually better to get to get a slow lock than a too fast lock so to speak uh, be, because it might actually suspend the screen before the screen's locker have started at all and that is really what, what is problematic you know because that means when you resume the computer it will be unlocked, maybe just for a fraction of a second, but, but uh, that is not good. Your screen will be, everything on your desktop will be visible when you unlock and stuff like that. You really don't want that. And, and you, by setting it up like, like this, you can be sure that doesn't happen. And yeah, this is a bash script also, so let's change the shebang there. Okay, save. I guess we can try this screen because it has the screen saver and everything set up and I can explain how it works. So now, except as activate, now it looks like this. Oh, cool. 3D cube. The screensaver, all you have to do is use this environment variable, execute lock saver, and then the command saver underscore x screensaver. The available commands here uh, are, I think it's uh, mplayer and mpv is another screensaver you can use with execure lock. And this is one thing that makes it more secure according to themselves at least. And by them, I mean Google, by the way, I guess I should say that, that it's Google who maintains this utility, this lock utility. It have also quite recently gotten a new uh, release here, but uh, it's also not available on SUSE yet, but uh, they released a new release like two weeks ago here 1.8 with some minor improvements but I guess it's good detect current XSS state I don't know probably just improvements um, so those screensavers for them to work you of course need X screensaver installed because that is what is being used as the background yeah that was what I was about to say that it this is one thing that they say is making this more secure is that it um, it uh, separates the actual lock or it, it it's actually comp completely modular there is like one process that displays the background one process that uh, uh, displays the the prompt and one process that authenticate the password against uh, PAM if you wanted to, but you can also use other authentication methods. You can actually set, set this up in quite complicated ways and probably make it work with fingerprint readers and stuff like that if you are into that stuff, or these uh, USB keys, you know, and things like that. I have never looked into that. I just used the normal P PAM password thing here. Um, but it's actually quite good that it is modular like that it means that you can either kind of quite easily hack your own screensaver if you wanted to uh, the background that is and um, the secure thing is that even if the screensaver background for example in in my case here uh, the, the 
X screensaver background. If that program would crash or be corrupted or whatever, not work, the screen will just be blank, like it was uh, completely black. So you st it still doesn't unlock the screen. It's not related to the lock really. And that's, when you think about it, it's, it is a good security uh, uh, method. And then you can also have kind of bloated uh, screen backgrounds like uh, animated psychedelic cube like we have here. Uh, because it doesn't matter if it would crash, it doesn't matter for the, the lock will still be active and the prompt will still show up because that's a separate process. Uh, I think it makes sense, but maybe you don't. And that's completely fine. Then you can use another lock screen. Um, X screensaver, and this is also why, why I like this, uh, is uh, when you have it installed, you can open the screensaver settings, for example, like this. Uh, which will prompt you here uh, if you let's make it floating when you start the screensaver settings you get this uh, pop-up asking you if you want to turn on the x screensaver daemon because that is not running now that is what x set is activates probably wants to activate you know the real screensaver but you, we can do it here now just so i can show you if we do that we get the stupid <laughs> x screensaver splash screen uh, and now you are able to preview the, the different screens here. So if you select something here, not that. When there, when there is something like this, it usually means that it wants to use like uh, your personal or images uh, from the pictures directory or something, um, by the way. So yeah, this is cool. Uh, preview. And then you can preview it full screen. Here, oh, I had it set up to lock the screen because if this option is active in X screensaver settings then it will actually use this as a locker and you will get that X screen screensaver lock screen but this only applies to this daemon uh, the lock screen and stuff like that and the thing is we actually don't want the daemon so if we kill daemon from the menu here doesn't matter if this is active or not because X uh, secure lock simply ignores those settings but it actually read the settings related to the screensavers themselves for example which screensaver you uh, select here so if we select this and then I do X set as activate you see I don't even have to close the program or apply settings it immediately have that now with X secure lock and it even um, consider these uh, settings I don't know max number of blobs see if we see any difference maybe maybe this was a bad uh, wireframe I just want it to look different there that looks different you see the settings apply immediately that's uh, kind of nice and you can configure that from here um, I like this setup quite a lot to be honest this X XSS lock with X secure lock and X screensaver. So this is how you customize how it kind of <laughs> the the aesthetics and uh, um, then you don't have to think so much more about it. And I think these are much more fun than I3 lock. They simply are more fun and looks better in my opinion. And it's not, you might think, well, it seems uh, super bloated to have like three programs I used to just have I3 lock. But the thing is, this XSS lock is the only thing running in the background. It uses about six megabytes of RSS uh, shared RAM here, so that's literally nothing. Uh, and it's only bloated when you start the, the screen locker. Then that's when it starts X uh, screensaver and that stuff. But as soon as you unlock, those uh, processes are terminated. And it, it doesn't use anything, really. Uh, and you also get the benefit here from, from it automatically uh, uh, starting if, if uh, the screen would go into sleep and stuff like that. Um, maybe we should talk a little bit about that, by the way. Xset here, which we have used to activate the, the screensaver, that's a, an old, <laughs> old weird command that you can do lots of things with, actually. And uh, if you do exit Q, that will query exit for its current options. Uh, 
to give you a hint of <laughs> the different things you can do here. Uh, for example, you can turn on different LEDs, like the caps lock LED. You can maybe sometimes most of these or some of these doesn't work also because it's kind of weird. Uh, but you can turn off individual LEDs on the keyboard. You can maybe set the mouse pointer acceleration speed and you can set the repeat time for the key keys. You can set font path. You can set up DPMS settings and you can set up screensaver settings. Um, and as you can see, screensaver here now, that is, I have it set to 0, zero and that is kind of disabled. It will never start the screensaver. But if you change these uh, settings here, now I'm not sure. Is it if we do exit S and then we say. Uh, 10, 15. I just want to see which one is timeout and which one is cycle. Um, because th they also doesn't mean that anymore. Yeah, I'll get back to it. Yeah, okay. So the first one is timeout, the other one is cycle. It doesn't matter here. Uh, because what that actually means is... Um, didn't we have a terminal here? Yes. XSS lock help. SSS lock also have this command line option, notifier. Uh, and then you specify a command for the notifier. This is a command that will get executed uh, when the timeout is, uh, when the timeout happens, it will execute the notifier command. And then it starts, the actual lock is started 15 seconds in this case after uh, 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 the notifier command and now you might think okay but what are the what are the, what is that why that is kind of for screen dimmers and stuff like that and execure lock actually has a built-in uh, screen dimmer but it's a bit weird to set it up here I will do this rpm uh, ql and then execure lock that lists all the files that was installed uh, with the package execure lock. And here, as I always say, uh, these paths are probably different depending on the distribution. But on uh, OpenSUSE here, uh, libexec, that means that these are executable library files. And here we can actually see the uh, saver x screen saver is one of these executable uh, uh, um, library files. Then you have this one, USR libexec execure lock dimmer. I executed it here and you see how the screen dims. It, uh, it looks a bit different depending on if you have a, if you have a um, compositor running or not. If you don't have a compositor, you get this uh, uh, dithering effect, which I actually like more. And you can also force that with one of the command line options here. Uh, and uh, if you want to use that, and it is kind of nice to do that, uh, you simply add that notifier command here. Let's see now, notifier. Fire, and then you have to add the full path to that here, since it's not in, in the search path, so to speak. And now I think it will just work here. If we just restart this, user restart XSS lock service. And then we set the screensaver settings to something really low here. So uh, after five seconds, start the, the notifier. And five seconds after that, start the lock. Now we'll see that it will automatically do this um, Hopefully, if it works. Yes, it starts to dim. And then it waits five seconds and then the screen lock starts. So this, maybe you like this, maybe you don't, you know. I have had so much, I'm not blaming XSS lock or stuff here now, but it feels like these settings sometimes get messed up. And it might be that other programs actually starts messing with these. There are like games and 
maybe when you go full screen in a media player, they might actually start messing with these uh, uh, configurations. And it also, this, this is just for the screensaver. This DPMS is for the, is for the screen blanking. If we disable the screensaver here, which we can do either like this or you say exit S off, but I have found that this is better if you want to disable it. The DPMS stuff, it works similarly, uh, but um, we can, sure, we can test it a bit here. So exit DPMS, and then here it have three values instead. So after this amount of time, it will stand by the monitor, the actual display, you know, and then it will suspend the display after 70, 7,200 seconds more, and then it will actually turn it off after this amount of seconds have passed. So it have three stages, but it kind of works the same way. Uh, to be honest, I don't think this will, this will not trigger the notifier command. That is only triggered by that exit S, the first value here. This will probably just start it here. So if we set the DPMS to something low as well, so five, five, five or something. So five seconds, then it will, should blank the screen. But I have noticed that in the virtual machine, you don't get some, any screen blanking. Now you see it's simply started it without dimming the screen because it doesn't make any sense to dim the screen because it is uh, turned off now if it would be a real uh, monitor. Um, it's just good to know about these and you can do the same thing with DPMS if you don't want it like that. Uh, we could also actually create a systemd unit that will set up the values we want for these. I have been thinking about this but I think maybe we can wait with that uh, create like because you probably want to do that in or now when I think about it could do it like that but no we will not do it now maybe a continuation here just good to know about this in, in case you you are messing with this and then you notice but that the 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 screen gets locked automatically and it actually will do that when these triggers happens but it's as far as I know, these are the only ones that, that should do that. But there are other programs that might hijack this stuff and, and things like that. And it also depends a bit on your desktop uh, environment. Um, now I don't have that active here, but XFCE actually have a power manager uh, utility. I think we get some error or something now. Yeah, it say that it is not started. But I guess we can do that now and see because I just to see here if those settings aren't part of this. Here we have display, you see, these are the same settings and this is the important part. If we change these settings, it will actually, uh, um, these are independent of the X set settings. And I think XFCE does this properly. So it uh, simply ignores the X set here and they don't have any effect at all. Uh, but it's kind of annoying at the same time that now you have to remember where these are actually coming from. I never used a power manager because I have had the feeling that this it have caused me issues, but I'm, I'm not sure. But you can also set up other timers. And here we also have the suspend and hibernate and that stuff. That also means that if this is active, now I don't think we can do system CTL suspend anymore. Then now we are supposed to use the desktop environment uh, power manager. So that is what these power managers do. Basically, nothing you couldn't do before. So in my opinion, they are just an extra unnecessary uh, layer on top of things in a way. Uh, <laughs> when that is also what system D is doing, it's also kind of an extra layer on top of things. So. It's like you get layers upon layers upon layers. What I'm trying to get to is that sometimes the screen starts blanking while you don't want it to. And it's one of these annoying programs that have decided to, to change the settings. Now when I close that, let's see, maybe it has changed the settings here now. It should say zero, zero on both. No, you see, now we have a different time here, even if, um, or maybe it is running actually. Yeah, yeah, that may, might be the case. Uh, power manager is running. Okay, if I kill this, will it reset to what we have had before? No, you see, we have different 
values now, even in exit. And they were just automatically configured there by XFCE4 Power Manager in this case, but other applications sometimes messes with these. Personally, I disable this DPMS screensaver, disable it as much as possible. You can also disable it in, in like the XORG conf files to make sure that it really is not an extension available for, for, <laughs> for X. I do that. I will not go into that stuff here, but uh, to me, this has been the source of, of many annoying uh, uh, things. And it's not related to anything, or of course it is related since it starts to lock now. And, and it becomes much more obvious when it actually locks the screen now, also automatic, when you have this XSS lock. Still think it's worth setting it up and using it. And either really get to the bottom how what is causing your uh, screen lock to turn on when you don't want it to. Because it feels also like sometimes this is kind of broken. It's supposed to only do this also for 600... Um, seconds idle but um, it feels like sometimes it kind of forgets or doesn't care that you are actually not idle and sometimes it starts when you are watching a movie or something like that it's supposed to disable itself when you are not in full screen or when you are in full screen it should disable itself usually that works but sometimes you are not in full screen you might watch something on a, a web page or whatever that is not one of the main I think YouTube does something to make this work or I'm not sure, but it usually never happens there either. But it can happen when you don't want it to. That was a really long way of saying that look into the DPMS settings. And I added some links here at the bottom um, for about session lock, display, power manager, signaling, uh, power management, uh, ACPI. These uh, Arch wiki pages are great to get a better sense on, on how this works. Um, here, this blog post here, I wonder if that isn't about that uh, executing commands with systemd instead when, that, uh, when, when you go into sleep. And then you could kind of get something similar working without using XSS lock. But I still think that XSS lock is, is uh, better to use that. Because it is so simple. Alright, that is um, at least what I, I am using. I use this combo with XSS lock and XSecure lock uh, and X screensaver. Feel free to use whatever you want. I think it's a, I think it's a great uh, uh, configuration. Another good uh, reason why to use this is that now I think I've already set them up. But these are the whisker menu settings here. Uh, and Or I have these. So clicking on lock screen here. That is this button. That is what this setting does here. So clicking on that, that starts DM to lock. Okay, slow, I know, unlock, uh, but what we could do is instead set it to exit s activate, you know that generic command here, this is another uh, reason why it's so nice with these generic ways to, to lock and or trigger things by event instead of commands. Uh, then you can have the same generic command in all your menus and stuff like that. You know, maybe you have a Rofi menu with options. Do you want to log log out, suspend, reboot, whatever. Now you can just use this and then mess with your lock screen as much as you want from, from the script file here without the need to restart or configure it anywhere else. You just have a single, uh, um, single file to, to worry about. And yeah, I guess we should test it also. So if I click lock now, it should ex exit ac activate. Uh, yeah. And in my opinion, it have all the options you need here. Um, you can customize the colors of that prompt screen. Uh, let's see. If I added that here. No, okay, I don't have it. But you can also, if you Google around or search online, Maybe search on GitHub for execure lock. You, you might find other um, cool setups you can do. And there are those who have created their own uh, screen savers specifically for execure lock. It's not that difficult to do that, actually. If you look into to the source here, and you will see that this um, 
screensaver we are using helpers is actually a shell script saver x screensaver is a shell script that uh, figures out how to start the x screensaver thing and stuff like that and i think if i'm not mistaken in these shell scripts they probably terminate that xss lock file descriptor also maybe maybe not yeah whatever whatever i know it's a bit messy this video i i know that but you get a good set up with this and this is also how to do it with transfer sleep lock correctly you uh you you sh really should use that if you're using xss lock and that may or may not add some complexity to your uh method this is the dead simple way of doing it and there's nothing wrong with doing it like this either i3 lock is a great uh, locker as well it's very it's also sec very secure it's very simple they don't add they don't uh, want to introduce any functionality to i3 lock actually they are more conservative when it comes to i3 lock than they are with uh, i3 so they don't support like font options or maybe they do but they don't support uh, clock option for example and very little custom customization and really how much customization do you need the, the, the computer is locked it doesn't matter what's happening here all right all right um yeah i think this is good next video i haven't decided i actually tried to record uh tabs in my browser video maybe i might do that i have a distro hopping thing going on might do that soon here maybe a video about that um building i3 from source also is in the pipeline as they say but till then i hope that you have a great day